Hey guys, how are you? Welcome to the stream. Uh, let me know if the music volume is already there. Okay, I don't like to be intrusive. How's everybody keeping? I can see a couple of are in there already, that's great. Uh, so, we're back on the old Hellboy. We were <coughs> took a detour the head but uh it's great to i was thinking during the week uh we had done we had worked on the hellboy for a good while and um this music is actually distracting me on top it's just up there but uh we had worked a good bit in the hellboy and i thought it's a shame to just let that die away and let it be forgotten so i said i'll grab it and because I, I had an idea for him to put, I, I did this cat, a little, a little kitten that I did a while back, and um, Hellboy, for those of you who aren't familiar with the character, has a thing for cats. So I thought it'd be cool, because the pose that we went for was, actually I never put the, uh, let me pull in my pure ref here. So I can show you the initial concept. The initial concept is just this guy. Uh, by Derek Lofman. You can see down L A U F A M A N. Um this is the initial concept. And from this the pose I didn't necessarily feel like this was gonna be some big action pose. So what we did was, out of just kind of comedic side of it, I thought I'll just have him, because he's smoking, have him out on like a smoke break. Um, and then I was thinking maybe he's, and you know, he's turning to look at someone. But the, he, obviously he has his, his right hand of doom, the big huge stone hand. So, I was thinking if I lift this hand, which I did a little bit, I just rotated it around before the stream. Uh, and I need to maybe even flatten this out a little bit more. I'm not sure, but what I'm thinking I'll do is I'll show you this cat. So I've got this little kitten that I did. So I was thinking of if I put, and I, luckily I had an earlier version of it. So it's still broken up into pieces, so I can, you know, repose it a little bit if I need to. And put that in a little pillow in his hand, which could be kind of cool. So, um, I think that's what we're going to do. So we'll go back to Hellboy here. That's bothering me. There you go. Um, so I could put like a pillow in his hand and use the dynamics to like let the pillow fall into his hand and then use the dynamics and push the cat down into the pillow. And that way, you know, you'll get like compression and stuff in the pillow and it'll make sense. So the cat will only be, it'll be, it, the idea is to be a kitten and what that'll, do quite nicely I think is give a really good sense of scale because you'll have this tiny little kitten. Now when I say tiny I've got the size of the the radius of the brush there. Like that size. So 
So the next thing is to decide like what where to put the hand. Do I put it like closer to the front, like rotate it around, kind of, or this way, maybe. So yeah. So anyway, we're gonna work away in it today. Like with this guy. You know, we're kind of we're just designing in 3D on the fly. I don't know exactly what I want to do, like the details on this jacket, for example. Um, I don't know what exactly I want to do with that yet, but we'll figure it out as we go and have the chats along the way. Does that sound good? Zete. Uh, So, now, Mr. Kamara, see you in the chat there. Welcome. Always a pleasure to have you in. Uh, I was just looking at, so for anyone who doesn't know, uh, and I'm calling, so f I'm going to start calling you JP because my silly old Irish brain can't fathom your name. I always think, oh, how do I pronounce it again? it's got the accent on the A and all I know I'm gonna butcher it so JP I think works well um, and I'm gonna I'll use this because it's really nice. This. So, this is from our friend JP, who's in the chat. There's his Instagram that I just posted in the chat there. So, this is a big jump in quality I think uh, and it's really uh, what I, I just I wanted to send show it to you is because it's great to see because um, JP has been in the um, discord for quite some time and always posting there and doing uh, really nice work and is a very good sculptor and showed me this during the week and it's posted on a story and it's for me wonderful I absolutely love it so um, go follow JP and give some support to my boy because he's doing badass work and he's getting he's just taking a big a big leap there so Um, give him some love for his hard work um, and now when you're super famous JP everyone's going to call you JP 
that's going to be you should put make a little uh, signature for the bottom of your work jp be cool all right so who's in today tara how you doing uh leonard thanks for joining yulia's in hey yulia um what's he gonna hold in his left hand he's holding a cup in his left hand presumably of coffee while he's having a while he's having a schmig um hey jeffrey welcome back um CYRF Forex. How's it going? Uh, okay, so let's get the sculpting. So it'd be nice to, yeah. So like I said, just it'd be nice to finish this guy off because he's come this far. You know what I mean? He's he's well within reach, and I love the character so. Nice to do a little homage. Homage. Alright. So we won't put the cat in, although uh, we should put the cat in, shouldn't we? I need to suggest like a copy of. So in my head, I'm like, it'd be great if the cat was looking at him. But for, if the cat's gonna be looking at him, the cat's then gonna be looking away from camera. And we won't see it, which is not ideal. You know what I'm saying? Or, maybe that's okay. Uh, it's not really. I don't know if I'm all right with that, just leaving the cat oh, like looking away from camera. That is kind of cute though, the idea of And maybe he's looking at the guy because you can't really tell where he's looking because he's got those like yellow eyes. Should we have some poly paint on him? Just to differentiate between. The forms. I feel like. To be too, that, that line to be too symmetrical on each side, so I'm just making sure this is a nice S curve to complement this essentially straight line on the other side. Could do with walking into this a little bit more.
Um, have you thought about using a cigar instead? Uh, yeah, I know he usually he, he always has cigars. The concept has a cigarette but which is why it's a cigarette instead of a cigar. That's purely the only reason. I'd, I'd imagine, yeah, the first thing I'd think of is a cigar. Uh, I'm thinking of Hellboy. So, yeah, we might change it. We might change it. I mean, really, we could get away with just changing the color to like a brown. Initially this cat was made as if it's on the ground. So hence why it's looking up so much. still masked. Yeah. I like the head tilt, but just bring it down a little bit so it's not fucking so miles up into the air. Something like that, maybe.
No problem, JP. Oh, your internet died. Did you miss your plug? <laughs> um, all right, can you make anything like make character dance? I mean, you can move characters. Yeah, I can move characters, but you wouldn't animate in ZBrush. Same way you wouldn't use a screwdriver to hammer a nail, if that makes sense. It's not what it's, it's not the purpose of the software. The purpose is to sculpt. Uh, but there's other the characters you make initially will be made in ZBrush and then brought into one where you, where you'd animate. So, not in ZBrush. Um. You can transfer your character to mix them up. Sure, yeah, you can transfer your character wherever you need to. That's absolutely possible. Um, Nadir, uh, great work, Paul. I feel that the cat looks better face to the camera. Maybe you can make the cat look at something around. Yeah. Cheers, Nadir. Um, cheers, my dear. I'm having trouble keeping surfaces clean while sculpting. Do you maybe have some advice? Asks Ward. Um, keep surfaces clean. Yeah, keep subdivision levels and use um, your Alt Smooth. So Shift Smooth and then release Shift and continue to um, smooth the surface and you will get it'll even out the surface but you need to have a lower topology level if you are using dynamesh for example it's so dense that the it's too many faces to average them out to make a clean surface so that helps a lot when you're trying to keep clean surfaces uh, work in pieces also like you know thinking like uh, primitives essentially and then get them together and then once they're together in the right shapes and they integrate they'll intersect and everything uh, if you watch any of my streams uh, starting out on any of the characters you'll see how I do that uh, and then dynamesh them together later and then you can add in the, te the secondary or tertiary details at that stage and then all your primary forms are nice and clean um, thanks my dear um, cheers JP thank you very much alright let's get rid of this If you're, ever, if you're on YouTube looking for a pillow tutorial, you're welcome. Um, choo -choo -choo. Well, we got the after effect. intersecting before so what we're going to do is I'm going to use the dynamics Does that poly count make? I'd say that's good you don't want too high a poly count it's too many pieces too many verts too many faces too many edges uh, moving and you get this like really extremely wrinkly thing uh, if you use that in dynamics if you keep it lower 
and there's less moving points you'll get much more natural wrinkles so the, think about it in terms of you know silk you could use more because sink, silk wrinkles really easily because it's a very soft material leather you'd use a lot less polys because it's much more rigid and, and, and hard so it's not going to wrinkle as much if you use a lot of polys on a material that's supposed to be on a piece of cloth that you intend to be leather it's going to wrinkle a lot and it won't look like like leather then even if you put a leather texture on it it'll just have that like even to the layman will feel like that doesn't look right which is what you're trying to avoid as best you can I do want it to be because I don't want the pillow to get lost I want it to feel like a nice B, how'd you get that username? B. Um, I'm doing well. B, how are you? How boys looking sweet? Thank you very much. Um, Jeffrey, hi, Paul. Love the work. Question: How important is topology in animation? If so, what sources can you recommend where we can follow proper topology so we can animate our characters? Uh, topology is very, very important in animation. Uh, if your character has not got at least decent topology for animation, then it, you can't animate it. Um, and there's there's a lot of ways to do animation, or sorry, there's a lot of ways to do topology. Um, a lot of ways, and it, and it, you need to practice it over time as well and really with topology topology is a funny one i feel like the best experience you can get with doing topology is actually in a studio where you can you're doing this you'll see different edge flows edge flow is the way in which see the, the lines here the edges flow around the character and that's really important because that's how like for example, if I wanted to animate this pillow and I rigged it as such that I want the pillow to animate and do that, right? So having loops going across it is the best way for it to bend that way and the loops can compress on one side and stretch on the other where if I want it to bend that way that's no longer necessarily the best way to have that edge flow because you're fighting against the topology it, you can do it but when you're doing topology on a character, what you're doing is you're putting the edges in such a place and in such a direction that the, the movements will work with the topology. So for example, across, you'll have loops around the mouth and then from the corners of the mouth, they'll go back. They can go up also, depending on what you need, but they, often they'll go back uh, and then they'll come up here and go back and from the bottom lip down and go back and then down around the chin and so on. And then up into the some into the eyes, some up the nose, and that way the mouth can pull out, and you've got all those ed, you've got all those loops around it to pull it out. Uh, also, if you want to do like a you know like an O shape or a kiss type thing, you can pull all those edges in. So you're looking to make the topology essentially follow the anatomy in a way, as far as you need to for movements but also you could be doing something for vfx where it's very complex 
um, and you need lots of you know subtle movements and so on in which case your topology is going to be a bit different than if you're doing a very stylized character in which case you want to keep it simple much more simple um, because you want to keep the shapes really clean um, and then for games you have to think about also you have to think about the poly count because you have to keep the game you don't want useless polys it's not um, which is quite different to animation mainly because in animation you do your topology and then it gets smoothed at the rendering stage uh, with games it doesn't get smoothed uh, so you can somewhat sometimes less so nowadays because obviously the technologies come a long way but you know if you think about like the first Tomb Raider and her head's a box you know what I mean um, where you know if I if I create just a box here and like could have done this better but anyway like that could be Tomb Raider's head essentially where in animation, if you had a box, you would do that to it, which is to subdivide it. And you can see there adds, you can see the extra polys that it's added in. So every face turns into four. And that's actually doing it twice, that's two subdivisions. So every face turns into eight. And it takes, when you subdivide something, what's happening is this vert, is averaging its distance to its neighboring verts. So you've got this vert, we'll want to get 50% to this one and this one and this one. And then same with all, and this one will do the same to that one and so on. So when you smooth it, that's what happens, right? Now, if I want to stop this edge moving 50% of the way all the way down to here, I can put an edge, or what we call a support edge, here. And now, it's still going to want to go 50% over to this one and this one, but it it'll, now it needs to go 50% to this one and not that one down here. And that means this is going to hold this closer to, where, closer to where it is now. So if I smooth that now, you see? Now remember, it's happening to all of these. So all of these top verts don't need to get to the very bottom anymore. So you can see what happens. So that's just in terms of modeling in general, like even if you're modeling props. For characters, it's more complicated because of the amount of deformation that they do or the amount of essentially movement. Um, if you don't follow... drop a link here to an Instagram page for uh, what uh, so this is um, again anyone Spanish there will be able to tell me how to pronounce his name properly because it's very different but I think to me it's like Sergi Sergi Cabale Cabale is it correct me anyway uh, a bunch of you will already know him, he's very popular, but um, he's a really good character model, but also has a background in rigging, which is the process in which you make the bones for uh, the animators to use. So um, a rigger has to understand how the topology works also, and uh, it's really good if you can be if you can, as a character modeler, you can understand rigging and understand animation so that you it'll inform your topology. Topology is, as a character, a character, a character modeler is quite a complex job actually because you've got to be a bit of a designer. You've got to have a good eye for 3D shapes. Um, 
and when I say a designer, that's no small thing. That's a lot to encompass into that one word. Um, you've got to have a really good eye um, for working off of concepts. Um, and then you have, to, and then that's just the art side. Then you've got all the technical stuff. So you've got to know how to do uh, good topology. You've got to know, you've got to have experience in order to know how to make your character as efficient as possible for for what's required uh, you gotta know a little bit of texturing a little bit of rigging to understand to inform you on how to do your topology um, at least a little bit about those two um, in order like UVs and so on um, you gotta know how to do blend shapes um, so there, there, and 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 that topology has, is a whole art form in itself, and so is blend shapes. Blend shapes is, is another whole uh, form of uh, art form into itself, also. Um, and you know, for any any new people that are just sculpting or whatever, like when I started, whatever amount of years ago now. Like I started my job and all I knew was ZBrush. I just sculpted. All I knew was ZBrush, and uh, then I learned to model, um, to like box model. Uh, ZBrush was because ZBrush was what got me into 3D. Uh, if it wasn't for ZBrush, I probably would still be doing paintings. Uh, not that there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I loved doing that. Uh, that's this is what got me into 3D. And from then I learned to appreciate like you know box modeling and stuff too and then I learned topology and I got better over time and then I learned blend shapes and I got better over time um, and you know there it's, it's like you know you you just you just a lot of it for me is experience over a handful of years um, There's the there's the digital book. It used to just be free online, but now I think you have to buy it. Uh, called the art of is it the art of moving points. And um, it's coming up there. Apple Books. There you can see it there, The Art of Moving Points. Uh, that's a really good book on topology. That's like the go-to, that's like, you know, the staple book <clears throat> in terms of that, so, yeah. So, to answer your question, absolutely, it's hugely, hugely important. And it's always evolving, you know, depending on the needs. Like, I'm, for, uh, I'm working on some new ways of approaching certain areas of the face and the hands for topo in topology at the moment like you know always trying to develop new better answers for things that will make life easier for riggers so you can make characters quicker or make deformations more or easier for doing when you're doing blend shapes um, so I like to keep it minimal um, and then also, um, I'm to move this up. Um, also, just finding little ways that I can, you know, make better deformations. You know, if I want like the the brow crease in here or something. Maybe just something I can do there that can make that a little bit better. Like for example, you might want in. And add, so you have your eyebrows, your eyebrows should be sat in between certain polygons. Like you should have an edge here, an edge here, and then an edge here. And your um, eyebrows should be sat in between on those three edges in between in those faces. 
and then here you might have an edge going down here and then that goes into the eye and then you have another edge outside of that one and that goes down to the eye and then the one inside that goes straight to the nose you want to make sure that you've got the edge that goes down and then goes to a pole and goes to the corner of the eye and then another edge inside that and then your your eyebrow mesh should be outside of that one because when you pull the brow in you need that outer edge to overlap the one that goes down to the eye if you do it inside of that you're going to overlap the edge that goes straight down the nose and instead of your crease going down and around the brow and in towards the eye your crease is going to go straight down the nose and look ridiculous so that's one example of something that you may not necessarily think of when you're starting out but you know with experience you can whether it's you know someone else who's shown you that or will show you that in a studio environment or whatever or you kind of just figure it out from trial and error but you know it's it's a lot to ask someone to learn how to <clears throat> model and then rig and then anime their character because that is a huge a huge 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 learning curve any one of those jobs is a huge learning curve so Let's play around with this. I love simulations. Right, gravity, firmness. Let's just run this and see what happens. Oh. Thought I hit collision volume, maybe I didn't. Alright, so you can see that's just dying straight away. Should we take that down. Take down the gravity. Now I can run the simulation. That's one way to do it, run the simulation. The other way to do it is go on to brushes. And here you got your transpose tool. And then beside it you got your transpose cloth tool. So now that I have that on, you can see I'm gonna use a gizmo and move it. It will be affected by the other meshes. That's another way you can do it and you might have a little bit more control. And of course you've got cloth brushes as well that will do the same thing with cloth move brush. do the same with the cat with the transpose just lower the cat down into it so that's getting a little flat which is no idea so i think there's so you got cloth nudge pinch move cloth dimple cloth fold pinch cloth pull cloth slide stir wind wind is cool I just want to inflate this. A little bit, because I don't want it to look super flat. I want it to look, look like a nice cushy. Cushy job. 
A happy rigger is a happy modeler, exactly. And a happy animator is a happy rigger, which is a happy modeler. That too. Um, oh, hey, Sean. I haven't touched ZBrush for weeks and weeks and now watching you work makes me want to give up what I'm doing and start sculpting again. Do it, man. Do it. Get back in there. You're too good to stop. Um, but it happens. I've done it myself. It happens sometimes. You can't beat yourself up over it. Just get back on the horse and enjoy it. Um, let's just stop for too long. Then, you know, there's a saying, pressures for tires. Which is to say, you know, pressure's not good. But a little bit of pressure is a good thing. A little bit of pressure is a good thing. Keeps you on your toes, keeps you going. Um, do you know, I think this pillow needs to be a bit more here, huh? fingers and this oh great Oop. just turn on double oh double on just want to make sure I'm not missing any faces Do us, um, G Man 5837. I hope that's not your bank digits. Uh, hello, new to the stream. Got a quick question. Cool, welcome, G Man. Uh, I was wondering if Z Modeler is worth learning for hard surface, mostly for concept art. I've used Maya during school, but never liked its modeling tools. Uh, I've always been better at organic models, so I know ZBrush UI much better already. Well, if you like doing hard surface and you want to do anything like that in ZBrush, then yeah, the Z modeler is a must. Uh, that's how you're going to like delete edges, add edges, bevel edges, all that good stuff. So yeah, you, absolutely, I recommend. Even if for everybody, the Z modeler is a very, very powerful tool in, in ZBrush. Um, literally, it's it's a staple part of ZBrush because without it, if I wanted to like delete an edge, I'd have to, you know, if I wanted to just come in here and say, like, I have a, I have a quick select, or, or sorry, I have a shortcut key for the Z modeler brush. So like, if I just wanted, like by default, it's on insert. If you hold L Alt while it's on insert edge it'll delete an edge so if i want to delete edges i can just do that um if the z modeler wasn't there i would have to go i'd have to bring this into something like maya to do that so the z modeler is like a staple part of zbrush and um, so yeah absolutely uh, it's and it's not it's not difficult to use you know if you know if you know uh some basic modeling terms like bevel and uh, insert edge and you know all that kind of stuff you'll already understand what each thing does so you'll have no problem you barely it's barely I would barely call it learning you you'll just know how to use it um, it's very simple you just you have something like this if you're hovering over an edge and hit space it gives you the options for edges so if I want to insert and then it'll give you any secondary options that you might need down here like if I want to go to bevel do I want to bevel bevel the whole edge loop part of the edge loop or the poly loop and then when i bevel it do i want two rows blah 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 um you know creasing collapse an edge so i can go in here and just collapse an edge all that kind of stuff so um it's very straightforward and then if you that's an edge if you want to hover over a face and hold space and you'll get all the options for faces you know like extrude a face uh, move it, mask it, whatever you want to do, and then the same on a vert. Just hold it over a vert, and you get it all. And that's it. That's that's. I've just done an entire tutorial on the Z modeler brush. So it's that simple. If you know the terms, if you know the terms, if you're new to modeling, then 
obviously there's a little bit more there because you might know what bevel means so you might have to do a bit of trial and error and play around with it uh, okie dokie so we're going to go back and do this again transpose cloth so now the cloth's in will kick in as it hits that surface just gonna nice and slow because see the thing so something to take into account when you're doing this is if you go too fast you're not giving it enough time to compute where the surface is contacting your mesh so if i go really fast you see it'll it'll actually just go through it and everything where if i take it kind of handy you're allowing it to be more accurate that's why, for example, if you're just running a simulation and you have the gravity up really high, it'll fall really fast. Um, so something you can do to combat that is up the simulation iteration. So how many, how many times does ZBrush compute per second, essentially? Um, now, what, what you have to be careful of is if you launch that up really high, it's gonna be quite taxing on your machine. So we can afford more though here, I think. I think up to like 250 or so. And let's there. Grab this too low. I'm gonna be here all day. But something like that's not bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. Now, I'm just smoothing this top part out. Even though it's giving me more realistic wrinkles, I'm gonna just smooth those wrinkles out a little bit with the fact that I'm gonna lower this kitten into it in mind. So I don't necessarily, so I just want, you know, don't it. What I'd like is when I lower the kitten in, that the, like it kind of bunches up around the kitten, so the kitten like gets sunk into the middle. So even for that, we'll see how it goes. The first time, might have to take it back out, subdivide it one more time, and drop it in to get that to work. Potentially, but, but you know, a little bit of trial there, quick bit of testing, see what happens. I even make the kitten. Smaller. Because I really want I really want it to look like a kitten. And he's huge. So actually really the kitten should be like less than half the size. But I don't want it to be like I don't want it to be lost either. So I'm gonna strike that balance. Something like that. Um greetings from Mexico. Uh, welcome from Mexico, ever one two four seven. Welcome, buddy. Thanks for joining. Um, why not switch transparent mode on? Uh, says Leonard. Uh, well, why would you say that? I I, I don't feel well. I could, but I don't feel there's a requirement for transparent mode right now. To be honest, I wonder why. What what makes you say that? Um, Forty-five minutes just to move a box. Yeah, pretty much. Forty-five minutes. That's that's a result of me talking too much, Sepper. So you know, I apologise for talking too much. But people need these things to be explained. That's why they're here. You know, and I'm not essentially here just doing a demo. I'm here to interact with you guys. So there's that too. I keep you guys company while you guys scoped, hopefully, and vice versa. Okay, so.
pull it back down, you can see it's digging in there. And just let it sink into the pillow. Um, cheers, Sepper. Se Sepper? Sepper? Hope I'm pronouncing that right, buddy. Um, why not using the inflate in the simulation mode? I could. I could. Uh, it just didn't really. It's only at the top. There was nothing to interact with on the top, so. Didn't feel the need. I just I have inflate on four, so I'll just use that. And away we go. I'm all about the path of least resistance. If I've got a quick button to it and I don't need anything else. Then that's that's what I'm doing. Give me that arm back. So, what I'll do now is we'll just subdivide this pillow. And we can sculpt into it. Uh, oh, it means sky. Sepper. Sepper. In sky, that's awesome. In where did you say? What language is that? Or yeah, what language is that? It's cool. My name, Paul, actually is like comes from like Latin for like small, which is just do you know what I mean? <sighs> when I learned that, it was not a good day. It was a bit upsetting. You know, you want it to mean sort of sky, something majestic, something cool, ocean, hero, something admirable, small. So that was a bit upsetting. Let's puff up this panel a little bit. Something that I like to do when I'm doing wrinkles is to actually, so see, like this level, you can see the tessellation there, you can see the polys. This level is tends to be good. See, like that's happening, for example. So it's not clean, it's not smooth. But I tend to like to use, you know, if I'm using the Damien standard to make some creases or whatever, I tend to like to do that, uh, at, and then do it at this, do wrinkles like that at this stage. Like bigger wrinkles at a lower poly count and then subdivide and then refine so if I go up one you see now it's so just do a bit of oh get rid of this so you can see my brush is up here
there's something I'm being really conscious of is not using the same size brush everywhere. It's not very organic. Can you do that? Sorry, there was someone asked me. Oh, what GPU do you use? Uh, I have a, a 3080. Uh, well, <clears throat> I think someone has uh, RAM. Yeah, RAM is more important for ZBrush overall. It doesn't use much. It doesn't use GPU really at all, except for a couple of functions here and there. Uh, and I think it's more stuff like. Um, you know, you use surface noise and stuff and it pulls up another window. Um, I'd have to double check that though. You could leave that comment. Um, on YouTube or whatever. Um, let's see, can I, get, can I get that for you? Or get one of the other guys, one of the other Pixlogic guys. So. Clarify where ZBrush actually uses. I don't know offhand exactly. Aloha, Harry Mandibles is back. Still love that man. I'm never gonna get sick on that. Um, <clears throat> Daniel Cabello, uh, hey, looking so cute and nice, awesome man. Thank you very much, Daniel. you fall back to when you don't know what to sculpt example face hands masks monsters etc p.s much love much love brian um is there i guess if there's anything i fall back on i will like well i don't know if there's any one thing but like for example Something I might fall back on is like thinking of like a character that I love from years ago that I haven't seen a sculpt of and just try reimagine it somehow. Um, that can be fun. So sometimes I might do that. Um, I do like, well, actually, what I will say, um, you mentioned faces. It probably is something like faces. Like, if I'm not super motivated to sit down and sculpt, 
Uh, how I remedy that is I will uh, do something smaller because obviously you need you need to feel motivated to take on a big project. So what I'll often do is I'll do a bust. Uh, I might find a face online, like from a, from a 2D artist, or I might just come up with something myself, uh, draw something myself. You know, if I find it, if I think of something, uh, it's situational. Um, just to get me sculpting, and I'll often enjoy it, and that will then keep me going, so that I don't end up going a long time without sculpting anything. Uh, you know, it's something that I can do over the course of you know only a couple of days at most. Uh, usually, I could sculpt like if I sat down. Um, if I sat down and I had a couple of hours ahead of me, I can pretty much get the whole head done in that one sitting, you know, right? So it's not a big commitment. Um, so I'd say if there's a, yeah, that's probably, I hope that, I guess that's the best answer I can give to that question. I hope that helps. And yes, Chris, it's a pillow. It is indeed. I'm gonna put on Archicorp here. Right. Uh, how much? How much long to final character? From zero to one. Uh, okay. So I think the question is how long to finish a character, like from to a hundred percent. Um. I mean, it depends as well what you mean by a hundred percent. So to finish just a sculpt. Uh, this is always a difficult question because. Um, I think probably especially, or not especially for me, but a little bit more for an artist like me because I don't, my style isn't exactly, you know, I tend to switch it up because I get bored of one thing once I do it, so I tend to rotate around a lot and depending on the style can change the time frame a lot. So obviously the simpler the quicker it is to make uh, generally speaking but not necessarily either because sometimes you know trying to simplify it is really complicated and it's the thinking that requires a lot of the time rather than the practice of actually putting marks down and all that uh, can often be the case um, I'm just going to smooth this back a little bit because this is actually too I've sculpted it into it a little bit heavier should for a pillow it wouldn't be this wrinkly you know um but that's okay it's nice to you know go in and then you can just peel it back and again i'm using the alt smooth so holding shift pressing down and lifting shift and then and i'm doing that even when i'm doing these quick strokes i'm just tapping shift before I put the pen down and lifting it immediately. Um, so to finish the sculpt I would say and to be honest it would be a little bit of a guess at this stage because what can also affect it a lot is like how much work it for the studio I'm doing. Uh, because sometimes you know you work a little bit late 
because um, you're just not because they ask me to or they want me to just uh, or like not because they expect me to just because you know I'm doing something that I'm enjoying for them and you know six o'clock comes around you don't realize the time because you're stuck into what you're doing so that can happen um, and then and so maybe you don't work on it one evening and then you do the next and then you have something on the next evening and so like if I even said a week it's like it depends on how committed to it you are that on the each day so it really is a hard question to answer I would say <clears throat> if I had to average it for a character sculpt in generally speaking my style about Fifty odd hours. Um, now that said, so for example, Mr. Freeze was very similar to the process of this, where I'm designing things in 3D as I go. Except Mr. Freeze, I had no like I had a concept for the head on this one. I had no concept at all for Mr. Freeze. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's in my portfolio. Um, it's my late. It's the last sculpt that I did. Uh, there's a link there. So um, that took a while. That took like sculpting on and off. I was probably sculpting that for like a month. Um, but how many hours in that month is really impossible to say some evenings you know I was busy sometimes whatever you know so it's really hard to say to be honest but yeah if I had to thereabouts that where you know if I'm just doing a bust I can do it in, a, in an evening I can just do a bust you know because especially like I'd be slightly I'm, I'm slightly slower on stream because of talking to you guys where if I'm just sitting here listening to music and sculpting uh, it's also because what happens is and you, you know, this is good to know for work too uh, if you're working for a studio or any, any work in fact um, if you get distracted there's a state of flow you can get into um, and that's when you'll work really fast and efficiently um, if you break this state of flow, it can take a long time to get back into it. And that can happen, so if you, for example, are sitting in the office and you're working away, you're in a state of flow, you're, you, you can feel everything just kind of coming to you uh, every, you're enjoying it and then someone comes over and taps you and says oh can you do something over here just for a second and you go over and 30 seconds out you're done then you sit back down you've lost the state of flow and it can take 20 minutes plus to get back into it uh, so you didn't lose you didn't lose the time that the person distracted you for or that you got distracted by something else where you haven't lost that, you've lost much more than that. Um, so in a work environment, that's important to know. Uh, you wanna generally, if you wanna be as efficient and as effective as possible, you wanna keep your distractions to a minimum. But um, the other thing to know, the other, or sorry, in terms of that then, obviously when, if you're sitting there, like I'm sitting here checking the, the comments and all that kind of thing. So I, I'm not really fully, I can't fully concentrate on the sculpt. I, I'm not able to, the only way I could do that is if I ignored you guys altogether, which obviously would defeat the purpose of me streaming. Well, to a point. I may as well just record, just record me sculpting and post that online you know what i mean it, it would work the point of streaming is so that we can it's live and i can talk to you guys and you know 
and, and vice versa. If you just wanted to watch a sculpt, then you'd be better off watching a video rather than a stream. Uh, the benefits of a stream is you can talk, ask questions, all that kind of stuff. So if I ignore you, then I'm ignoring the reason you're here in the first place. Which in turn, when streaming, wouldn't be efficient. So it's still efficient. Yeah, the topology is good here. So what I could do is delete, or sorry, duplicate this. this bit here because this is low poly see there's not much polys there so it's very easy to move around I can push into place without it getting lumpy surfaces themselves clean but I also want to keep like the, the lines as in if this was a drawing and that was a line I want to keep it that it's clean because you know if you were doing a drawing if this was a painting or something you wouldn't have this big lumpy mess of a thing you know what I mean I like I like just spent two weeks in my first character scope and I feel like I'm going a bit insane but that's okay uh, you know if you're only starting if the if it's not if it's not doing it for you and you've persisted a 
I don't want to give you bad advice. So I want to think here. You could move on. Maybe you've. It's hard to know without seeing what you've tried to do. So if it's your first character and you've picked something really complicated, it could be an idea to just start fresh, find something much more simple. Something much more manageable. Something you can do in a... A, a decent time frame, not like something that takes four months or eight months to complete but like you know something you can do in, in a week or two just do a bust get used to it uh, get a feel for it enjoy get get because you need to when you start to feel like you're getting better at it you'll enjoy it more and more and very naturally becomes something that you enjoy doing enough to take on a bigger project uh, if you try to do that immediately because maybe and i can understand that because you see something really cool that you want to like oh yeah i want this mech but it's got an afro and uh it's got like 18 guns and six arms and uh you know you, you just coming up with all these cool ideas uh that you think like will be visually cool <clears throat> but and you're like that would look great Uh, that that's a pitfall you can fall into. <clears throat> uh, like the same way when you're not feeling very motivated. If you try to do something like that, it's like trying to get the motivation to do something like that. Or it takes a lot of motivation, I should say, to do something like that. Uh, so if you're particularly, if you're feel, if you're new to it, you haven't built the rapport with it yet with the task yet to 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 feel motivated enough to, to to actually complete that task and then if you're not feeling motivated if you're even a professional artist that you're not feeling very motivated it's a lot to take on which you know is gonna is gonna demotivate you from doing it so um, that's my that's my outlook on it that's how i've always treated that and it's kept me going because uh, it's very important to me that i always continue to do my own personal work and like i said before i do apply a certain amount of pressure to myself to do that because you know if i don't and i let myself slack off and then you know a year goes by toss it at her Sadly, that I've let all that time go by without making some art. Because as well, I guess <clears throat> something that I also enjoy is I, I enjoy I enjoy the fact that I am an artist. You know, uh, personally, uh, I do enjoy that because outside of work like before I started in the industry and stuff and you know start doing this type of stuff where I, my network grew and all that um, I didn't know any at all like growing up and so on I didn't, I didn't know any artists I never met one before like my family wouldn't know any other artists they're like can't believe that I do what I do because it's like nobody they know does that so it's completely and you know there's, there's a nice feeling to doing that to because obviously as well growing up saying oh I'm going to be an artist people are like Pfft. yeah good luck to you so when you do it it's nice gives you that extra level of gratitude what do I usually charge per character again a very hard question to answer uh, he's like giving me all the doozies tonight um, it's very hard because again it depends on depends on the client depends on their budget depends on the time frame 
uh, and it depends on the character the, uh, by which I mean how detailed the character is uh, also you might want to agree on how many times they can give you feedback um, and that's going to come into it uh, because that's part of, well that's more part of the schedule if you like because you know you don't want to be working on the thing for eight months because they just won't stop giving you feedback um, which can happen I missed something sorry um, so it could be it could be anything from this is just sculpt just sculpt could be anything from 800 to 1600 for a character uh, but generally for me generally like I don't particularly I wouldn't I don't like to do a lot of freelance because I like to be working on my own stuff and I don't want to use up too much of my energy because I'm already working a full-time full-time hours in, in the studio during the day so if I'm then doing freelance at night you know you can burn out and then I don't want to work on my personal work because I'm just tired um, so I don't like to do it too often so when I see something that interests me and if it's you know I would where I wouldn't you know if I was a freelancer then obviously I'd be taking more jobs and I wouldn't take I wouldn't where as it is right now I generally only take the jobs that I feel as worth like it's something interesting that I'll enjoy making but also it's worth the time spent because you know I'm gonna earn a decent amount of money from it. It's worth me giving up my time for you know a week, two weeks, three weeks. But even that, I try to I try to take more freelance. I try to pick freelance jobs also based on the fact that like you know it's something I can do within two weeks at most. Because uh, anything that's like three, four, or more weeks. Of like w finishing work at six and then starting another job after um, you know it's one thing if you've got to support a family by doing that and uh, more power to you but like when you don't have to do it and you want to do your own stuff and, you know, it's very hard to take that on So I hope that answers your question. Hey Felipe, thanks for joining. Um, how, okay, Sepper Sky wants to know, can I ask you how much does it cost to build one character sculpt retopology for production? So when you add in the topology that obviously adds more time, which equals more money and that can be again like I said before depends on the character depends on the scope of the film TV show game whatever uh, because your topology is gonna change a bit there it might be more complicated if it's the show is more complex has more requirements from it uh, or you know maybe you have a base mesh already that you can that you can use or they have they provide you with a base mesh you know there's there's a lot of that kind of stuff as well that can uh, really change the amount of time that's going to be required but you know you could spend <coughs> you could definitely spend upwards of 2,000 euros this is I'm talking in um, and more uh, for a character sculpt and retopology for you know a, a decently a decently detailed character
because I'm thinking if I want to print this which I might the gap in there is just complicating things well and again small gap decent oh yeah someone said that to me earlier actually they mentioned the photon mono x yeah that's the printer i have uh, it's really really good i love it now that said i'm not i'm not a big printer guy i i love doing prints i can print the character but i'm not like you know i don't have like eight printers and experimented with 50 and more or something I, do, I don't have a, a lot of experience across a bunch of printers so uh, I'm not the best person to ask what printer to buy or whatever but I, all I can tell you is I bought that uh, for me at least it was reasonably priced and uh, it's worked a charm ever since so that said I don't use it all too much Printed a few things on it so far, but it was more just, you know. I feel like we're losing some stuff with the jacket because I can't pull it in. You know what I'm saying? Part of me is tempted to have him in his jocks. What's the cat's name? Good question. I have no idea what the cat's name is. Um, Mr. Sniffles. Jibbles. Gibbles, Gibbles. Um, I have no idea why Billy Bob Thornton just popped into my head, but he did. Billy Bob Thornton has popped into my head. Which makes me want to call the cat Billy Bob. But it depends, you know, those, you know, one of those people that like hates when a person gives like a, a pet like a humanish name. Because I know, I think it's hilarious. Uh, what kind of tablet do I use? I use a... Wacom Cintiq 22 HD um, which is an older one now uh, but I like it because it doesn't have any stuff on the side there's no buttons there's no touchpad bits I don't like that stuff um, and it hasn't got any of that so that's why I stuck with this I actually got the Cintiq Pro and I sold it because I kept like brushing off I'd like lean over to hit my monitor like hit the bot a button on my monitor or, I don't know it just seemed like I was doing it all like you'd never think you don't touch up the top right hand side of your monitor of your your, 
your your Cintiq, but I did it all the time. I would pull up a menu or change it into tablet mode or whatever. It was just ugh. It was upsetting me. Um But you know, it is better. I mean I I, I know what are people who have the pro and they love it? I'm just a moany human being, I think. But uh, yeah, that's the one I use. I do, I would like, I would like. I I just see. I I like that the shape that's happening there. Then we have to go boop and cover it all up. And that's a little bit upsetting to me. Our struggle as artists isn't about appeasing the crowd. Judas? What is that? Rather, it's about tending to the broken parts inside of ourselves. We create things as Can you guys hear that? There's like a dialogue in this song saying study our about perceptions of self. That art is not for other people, but is to fulfill or is a reflection of yourself. I don't like it when there's dialogue in this. Um, so there you go. That's what apparently this Hellboy is a reflection of me. Do what you want with that. Um, Billy Bob is what we're going with with the cat's name. Cheers, Tom. Um, cat likes French fried potatoes. <laughs> uh, yeah, been looking for something simple. Yeah, yeah, and and it's not going to cost you much at this stage either because it's pretty old. So, um, it's a good choice. There's other makes too. I mean, shop around, you know. I've never actually used any of the other uh, tablets. I've always had some teas.
so slow. Actually roasting. Um, let's, let's get a bit of motif on this on this arm. Colorado. Hey Julie from Colorado. How are you keeping? Hands up how many of you guys right now are actually sculpted? Yo, Julie from Colorado. Arclight sculpting. Fair play. Sia is trying to. That's better than nothing. Keep it up. Tar is sculpting. Brian, 07. Does that mean yes? <laughs> Tom Ward's doing some drawing. Good man. Julie. Oh, you're in work right now. That brings up another good question, actually. When is coming from Argentina, I guess, is what that means. Welcome, when, 91. Gato. I mean, something to do with a cat. Oh. Um, I wonder actually. Yeah, right, nah. Um, how many of you guys are working as an artist in the industry? If you're comfortable enough with saying it, at least. 
uh, versus maybe a student or just a hobbyist. That'd be cool to see. And if and, and what do you guys do? Like, uh, assuming you're comfortable to say, throw it into the chat. What what do you do? And obviously, if you have any questions about what I do, feel free. Um, what was I doing? Oh yeah, surface. Where can we get anything? Nope. Not too. Anything out of this mess? Exactly. Looks a bit. It looks a bit funky. Like, see this now. I think this uses your graphics card. This might use your graphics card to touch. on this at one stage and I collapsed it while it was high and lost all the low Please do let me go. Let me know what you guys think. So far, I need to like add some accents and little bits to the to the. Greetings from Italy, from Francesco. Welcome. Thanks for joining, buddy. Um, so Arclight is a student, and what are you studying, Arclight? Are you in? Are you in studying animation or games, or are you studying anything specific? Well, obviously. Um, Fince, Fin Sifty Cat in the game studio as a technical artist. Very nice, very good. Um, Francesco, I'm working in the industry as a modeler. Very good, very good. Um, Ward is a student in 3D animation. Cool, nice. Same as I did. Uh, actually, I did both. I did 2D and 3D animation. Uh, Thom, uh, Thom is... Oh, I'm a professional in the industry. Mostly create... Oh, medical animations. That's interesting. That's cool. That's like a really good example of like a job that you know you wouldn't necessarily think of initially if you were to learn something like ZBrush or or um, that cat actually looks great in that little pillow there. With that. I'm really happy with that. Um, I feel like it's the cat and the Hellboy is just like supporting the the cat. The cat is the piece there. Anyway, sorry, I got distracted. Um, 
Sarah is working in the industry. Very nice. What are you doing, Sarah? Um, Sia is a software engineer, but learning this on the side. Very nice. Uh, that'll be handy too in some respects in some parts of the, this industry. Uh, I'd imagine that would come in handy. Um, Shane was sculpting earlier and 3D printing now. Nice. I love 3D printing, I have to say. Uh, I don't I don't do it enough, but I love the process. I love like getting the gloves out and uh, all that stuff. I love doing it. Um would love to have oh so Brian would love to have his own miniature workshop, currently just a hobby modeling. Very nice. Yeah, that would be really cool. I'd love that myself. Um that's when I think of like retirement, I think of like, you know, hopefully I've built up enough of a following that there'd be a substantial enough, uh, hopefully, customer base that, you know, I could do sculpts and do like models that can be sold, uh, that can be printed and sold. And, and, and that will be enough to kind of, you know, be financially worth it um, in terms of like a small business type of thing. I'd love that, something like that would be really cool. Um, Zete, just a hobbyist trying to learn how to make stylized characters. Very nice. Uh, Julie is kind of. I use 3D to make mannequins for a company. It's a little strange, but at least it's 3D work. That's cool. So, like, when you say mannequins, you mean like for clothing and stuff, I assume, right? Um, see online, saying with ZWorks, do you have. A lot of different plugins you're using, or is this the base software? This is the base software. Um, no fancy plugins. This is just straight out of box. Uh, or, well, the UI is not standard, but that's I just made that myself. That's again not. It's obviously it's not a plugin, and it's not downloaded from anything. I just made that myself. It's very simple uh, to change your UI. Um. Where was I, sorry, Felipe, Felipe Nunes. I'm moving from the traditional designer multimedia works into 3D ZBrush characters. And taking what I already know about 3D and 3DS Max and such to transition to create models to print. Very nice. Is that to work in uh, that field in terms of printing? Um, but that's very good, very interesting. Uh, Julia, work. Oh, Julia, yeah, I'm dying to know. You've, uh, you've been like a regular, and, and, and many other years. It's great to see, uh, you know, I, I feel like I get start to get to know some of you guys the more you turn up to the streams. And Julia, you're definitely one of those people, so I was interested to know a little bit more about you. Um, working in the art viz industry, learning ZBrush in my free time. Very good, very good. Um, comp animation. Cool. Uh, Sarah's a 3D character model, very good. Oh, hold on. there was another one from the Bell Sarah earlier. I feel like I'm not getting the whole picture. Where is that gone? Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm talking too bad. Yeah, 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 you said you're working in the industry. Yeah, very good, 3D character model, very good. Show me, share your, um, share your, portfolio or whatever if you feel comfortable enough to do that in the chat I'd love to see your work um, if you're an SW engineer you could move into tech industry I started as a programmer for for financial systems wow cool yeah like I know like I know a lot of riggers uh, for example and then like there's you know the pipeline developers and stuff like that that you know obviously they are like doing code all day every day less so less so riggers but even riggers are doing that a lot and a lot and some modelers too building their own tools and stuff um, uh, Brian is saying for sure uh, that's the dream I'm going for now yeah that's a great dream man that's that's cool lock it down um, 
Oh, how do you make the light so good? I assume you mean here in this render, um, which is, uh, <clears throat> let me see. So I have, I like played around with the render settings and um, I, what I did was I played around with the render settings on a character I had then once I had a render that I liked, I deleted the character. And so all I was left with was the initial sphere from when I just opened, a, you know, when you go like as in, when you go into like project and I have like start up here. So just, it's, it's like a default project. Um, and a few other things like I changed the background uh, under document, uh, changed the settings here, uh, and just had that sphere as like a startup thing. So uh, every time I start ZBrush, I use that saved file under projects under startup. I I I, I double click that first and 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 open that first, and then I load ZTLs in after. And that way I always get those render settings back every time. The exact same render settings with the same background and everything. That comes true from opening the, the initial ZPR with just that sphere in it. So, um, yeah. So I can flick through it here a little bit. Render properties. No. Well, wax, wax preview was on and that actually does help because it helps a little bit with the shadows. And the next part, a lot of it is in here. So you can screenshot that if you like, and that should get you at least a good chunk of the way. And then put wax modifier on. You can also, if you don't want to put wax modifier on, um, you could probably do it bringing the ground, the global, sorry, the global strength. I was thinking of the floor strength on this one. Uh, the global shadow strength down to like maybe 0.65 or 0.6 for example and you'll get um, with those settings you'll get a much kind of softer light rather than the harsher the lights what I what I do like is bringing up the angles and rays and you can see like here you get that like break up of the shadows they're quite like that rather than like just always like really just smooth yeah I kind of like them like that uh, so yeah, uh, so I hope that's answers your question. Um, do a lot of code in Houdini. More opportunity. Cool, 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 cool. More opportunity to work with ZBrush lately. Yeah, nice. Yeah, Houdini's a beast of a program. That would be uh, that's a big one. Uh, I work as a 3D generalist, but I like doing characters. Yeah, very nice. Uh, there's a lot of people in the industry. Uh, a lot of people that write to me are like in another part of the industry and they want to get into characters um, or like you said just like enjoy doing characters on the side and Ohad Bend Hamo says hey Paul love your work thank you very much Ohad uh, what time is it now seven minutes past we did our usual late finish which is Feels like a half to now, it feels real metal. Oh. Okay. So that's where we're at for today with Hellboy. I'm glad we reopened this and I'm really glad that I thought of putting that cat in there. We need to finish up the cat. Um finish up the jacket. Add some pockets, bells and whistles. Uh, rethink that cup something needs to be done there um, could be kind of nice though with the steam coming off it later on uh, if I can pull that off or I'll just do it in Photoshop um, and then maybe this collar thing up here that's what I'll do that probably in the next stream where we can look at how to turn that collar into like a cloth or like a cotton looking thing by using just like spheres and we can use the z modeler and we can use nano mesh 
and do maybe try something like that see how that looks that could be kind of interesting and make like something kind of actually I should turn this on no I have no what color do we do the pillow before I get off what color do we do the pillow I don't know why green came to mind That's silly, isn't it? Is that silly? All right, so we got red, brown. So we got, we're in this spectrum for Hellboy. The cat's kind of down here. So actually green, If you wanted to think of it in like a tertiary color scheme, bum, 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 would be might work. He needs his tail. I forgot his tail. All right, we'll add that to the. I'm gonna write that down. I was meant to do that in this stream. Well, I said I'd do that in the next Hellboy stream, which was. I need to get more. Um. Hellboy's tail, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, underlined. Um, thank you for reminding me, where is that comment gone? Shane, Shane, thank you for reminding me, Shane. Tailless Hellboy, like. What was I doing? Um, yeah, so we'll need to add the tail. I'll add a split in the back of the coat, I think. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, in the back of the coat, have the tail coming through that a little bit. And uh, the arm, the rock on the arm needs a look see. But I need to get reference for that and you know do it properly. You could do it with fingernails. And all the, like I said, all the bells and the whistles on the coat, and then the 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 collar bit, that brown kind of cottony collar bit, or like uh, woolen collar bit, and uh, tweak and finesse from there, and maybe we'll have some more ideas. This is, it's the beauty and the burden of designing in three D, is because you're constantly tweaking and changing things, and at a certain point you're like, is it done? Do I call it? Because it, you know, eventually you have to. Um, where's that? Yes. It is. That's what I want. Mm, or the other way around. Is that better? No. It's supposed to be wrapping up here and I'm still sculpting. But I'm just curious. something like that maybe so uh, yeah so um, yeah so we still have to do all those little bits and I'd like to get this all the way to finish and I'd love to try and print it and but definitely like get it completely sculpted and get it all nice and 
then I can I can take it further after um, and you know make it make it pretty make it pretty um, so I'll show what I'll do is I'll give you if you want to see it after the fact when it's rendered and all that which will be down the line won't be anytime soon uh, it'll be down the line a bit but that and the rest of my other stuff is all in this link that I'll put in the chat there that's my link tree for all my social medias including my art station where I post all my, my work and then any whips and stuff into my Instagram and so on and so forth so uh, feel free if you if you are interested in uh, following me on any of them that's how you do it and if you like the if you like the the, the stream give it a like uh, so we know that it, uh, it's going in the right direction if not Feel free to dislike it, uh, so we know to do better. And if you want to see more, you know yourself. Subscribe. Uh, got my streams every two weeks, and all the other guys are constantly streaming as well. All hugely talented artists. Uh, it's a really high bar, so there's plenty there, and uh, they're all a bag of laughs. And like, who wouldn't want to spend their Wednesday night with me every second week? No, I wouldn't, but there you go. Uh, so, thanks a lot, guys, and it was a pleasure. Great chat, which is as always. And 